Before I explain to you just why the 14 Amazons is essential Kung Fu viewing, I should admit a few things. One, if you hadn't figured it out by now, I'm a huge fan of Asian cinema. Two, this also means that martial arts movies are my main vice, which the name of this channel should have given away anyway. And three, I can at times be almost fanatical about Shaw Brothers films. Which probably means that I'm not the best person to explain just why the 14 Amazons is such a must-see for all fans of Kung Fu cinema. But having said all that, I'm under no illusion about the quality of films that have been released under the Asian cinema martial arts Shaw Brothers banner. For every kid with a golden arm, there's a sex beyond the grave. A movie so bad it was once described as the Plan 9 from Outer Space of Shaw Brothers movies, which is fine by me as I love Plan 9 from Outer Space. But luckily, The 14 Amazons falls into that classic category of Shaw Brothers film, which is understandable as they had far more hits than misses during their heyday. So join me today as I explain just why The 14 Amazons is essential Kung Fu viewing. But before we get into into it and if you're new here and would like more videos like this then don't forget to subscribe to the Kung Fu Movie Database. Also feel free to slap a like on this video as it helps to get the KFMD into the algorithm and the algorithm is a cruel and harsh mistress. The 14 Amazon starts off with General Pao defending the border against an invasion by the Western Xi. An epic battle ensues which you don't actually see and at Golden Mountain he's ambushed and his troops are all but wiped out. Knowing that he is royally boned he dispatches his second and third in command to seek out the Grand Dame, his grandmother, to ask her for help. After the usual Shaw Brothers melodramatic goodbye, we should stay and fight by your side. We refuse to go. Oh, all right, when you put it that way. He gathers the rest of his army, which counts about eight people, and heads off to face the enemy, the evil King of Asia. This goes about as well as you would expect for the general. And after he refuses to surrender, no one surrenders in the Yang family, he and his men are chopped into tiny little pieces. Back at the ranch, aka the Grand Dame's Palace, they're celebrating the general's birthday and looking forward to his imminent return. Now, now there's a party you wouldn't want to be at when news reaches them that the birthday boy won't be able to attend on account of him being very dead. Cut to the Yang family mourning the death of the general, only to receive a visit from Wang Quinn, the majesty's right hand man who says sorry for your loss but we've decided to negotiate as there's no one left to defend us. This offends the grand dame and the many warrior women who decide to hell with it, if you want something done do it yourself. So after a fight between the daughter and the mother to prove that she is worthy of tagging along on this vendetta, they head off to open up a whole can of whoop ass on Ten Fang and his army. And that's pretty much what happened throughout the remainder of the film. From about the 49th minute onwards, the Grand Dame and the 14 Amazons, though they're really a way more than that, meet Ten Fang's army head on in battle after battle and kick ass in the usual Shaw Brothers way. Lots of sword play and red corn syrup by the gallon, culminating in a huge fight inside the camp of Ten Fang, where he comes to a sticky end with a spear ran through his stomach before he falls off a very high wall. No sequel for him then. So that leaves just one question. Is it worth the two hours of your life you'll have to give over to it? Well, yes, of course it is, or I wouldn't have made this video now, would I? The fact is that the 14 Amazons does everything that a good Shaw Brothers movie should. It's beautifully shot, the fights are excellent, there's plenty of claret flying around the place, the plot's pretty well developed, and there's an interesting cameo from Bolo Yang, and if that's your thing, then it's worth the time. Sure, the pace can drop off in places during the opening 40 minutes or so, but that's something that won't be new to Shaw Brothers fans, and if you've never seen one of these movies before, then I can't think of many places is better to start than the 14 Amazons. But what do you think? Have you seen the 14 Amazons? What did you make of it? Sound off in the comments section and let me know.